Good afternoon. And today we have a pleasure of interviewing our wonderful patient, Janet, and Mariana, who help us to go through the journey of myofunctional therapy. Again, first of all, we appreciate our audience. And if you suffer from sleep troubles or sleep next to the snoring partner, please click the like and share button. If you are a medical professional who is interested to find all the puzzles of uh, missing missing pieces of the wonder of the sleep apnea, please use our channel as a networking ground. This way we can find um, all your tips and tricks and strategy and we can make find the solution together to resolve the sleep apnea and sleeping travels for the people. But today we're gonna discuss a little bit different topic. Today we're gonna discuss myofunctional therapy. I know we always bring that strategy to a lot of our conversation, but still I get that question a lot. What exactly myofunctional therapy? I'm gonna give you my story, be kind it, and then we're gonna hear the Janet's story and Mariana's story. So this is my story behind myofunctional therapy. I always was wondering how come I've been doing orthodontic treatment since 2002 using clear aligners? Why? For some people, I have to use fixed and removable retainer to make sure their teeth don't move. And for some people, teeth stay straight, no matter what. I was wondering, why is that? Then, you know, my life progressed. I started being interested in the treatment for sleep. And uh, that time, I was wondering, how come overweight or obese patients might not have a sleep apnea and a lot of really sporty patients, you know, really lean and uh, very well-developed patients do have a sleep apnea. And I found a lot of connections with the neuromuscular functions of the facial muscles, specifically tongue and lips, and yes, nose breathing. So with myofunctional therapy, we're trying to accomplish four major goals. Uh, breathing through the nose, keeping the lips together, and then function of the tongue tongue have to stay on a spot, that means flat on the roof of the mouth, and a person or patient have to use only tongue during the swallowing of the water or food. It's actually not so easy to accomplish, and we'll find out why. So, good afternoon, Mariana, and good afternoon, Janet. Hello, everyone. And I'm going to ask both of you questions, and um, I'm going to add my point on specific topic. So tell me, Janet, what was your story? What was your situation before treatment? And um, what, you know, we want to see how we all end up here in the studio. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And thank you for having me. So I met these two beautiful ladies about a year ago when I was actually just looking for some, um, looking for uh, general dentistry. So I, you know, was in a new neighborhood, wanted something close by. And um, very quickly in my first exam, you know, we started uh, talking a lot about um, my, my teeth and my, and, and my bite and potentially some opportunity um, to change them. And I was hesitant because it's not the first time that a dentist had said to me, you know, there is an opportunity, whether it be through braces or Invisalign to really fix, um, you know, you know, my bite and my, and my smile, um, you know, and, and the, the question that was asked to me um, by the doctor was um, why, like, you know, why didn't, haven't you done this in the past? And the, the real reason was just, I didn't realize the negative consequences for not having, um, you know, the, my, my bite and my mouth um, correct. So, you know, I have, have um, I learned very quickly, um, especially because, and I could see it, right? We did a couple tests in the room about, do you see the way that you, um, the lines on your face, do you see the stains on your teeth? A lot of the negative consequences from having, um, you know, a, a, my bite the way that it was. Um, so we went down the path of, of doing the Invisalign. And one of the real things that was important to me is that 
it would be a one-time thing. I wouldn't have to continue to recorrect correct after the Invisalign um, portion was done. And so that's where we got into the, the therapy was, you know, the way that I hold my tongue and the way that I breathe, it's actually contributing um, to, to, to the way that my teeth were in my mouth. And so we started to correct um, both of those things at the same time. And you'll see, I still have my Invisalign in, but I'm very close to the end of my journey. Uh, if you don't mind, John, I'm going to bring the situation how it was before on the screen. Perfect. So that's how it looked when we started. And I'm going to talk a little bit about your journey from my point of view. And then we're going to hear the Mariana part of the story. So when we met, I saw you so wonderful and beautiful and uh, elegant and all of that. And then I saw the smile. Um, for me, you know, obviously the tongue was all over the place. And uh, as curious as I am, I always was looking for the root cause of it. Like, why is that? You know, we ask you some questions. And yes, as you mentioned, we did some tests. And today we're going to uncover, we're going to do the investigation why the teeth develop in the way they develop. <clears throat> so uh, I want um, to bring, uh, you know, I want to hear from Mariana because we did those test together what did we test and what did you see in this situation before treatment just to introduce for the audience mariana helped me mariana is a medical director of harmony dental arts and she helped me uh to to conduct my functional therapy she is actually behind correcting a lot of habits for our patients she worked uh, personally with each of the patients who have my functional therapy journey so, Mariash, what test we did for Janet, or what did you see specifically when we, you know, when we examined Janet? Yes, I remember that day in the office, and we asked uh, Janet to swallow, how she swallow. And that's and how she swallow on the screen. On the screen, yes, she put her tongue between her teeth, and uh, it was a lot of movements additional to the tongue on the face movements. It was a lot of movements on the cheeks and lips at the same time when she was swallowed. And also additional to that, we asked it about the breathing habits. And Janet said it's really hard to breathe through her nose. And uh, additional to that, she said that she usually has an open lip posture when she's not talking, when she's not eating, that she found that she has a like open spot between her lips. And I'm going to bring us back on the screen. And I would like, you know, keep doing our investigation. And again, thank you to our audience. If you have questions, please put them in the chat box. We, re chat box. we really appreciate all of you. And we're going to start the investigation. How come the bite like that actually happened? Tell me, Janet, in your childhood, do you remember a lot of allergy or a lot of respiratory tract infections? Uh, your sound, you muted. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah, definitely as a child, I had a lot of respiratory issues, whether it be allergies, pneumonia, strep throat, where breathing was definitely, um, you know, inter interrupted from, you know, um, from, from normal. And um, to brief, um, you learn uh how to breathe through the mouth i guess i can say it, learn to breathe through the mouth so tell us uh what what you know you breathe through the mouth were you able to breathe through the nose um uh, through your lifetime up until our meeting yeah i think through especially through this therapy when i became more aware of breathing through my mouth i wasn't even fully aware of it but when you know we started doing the investigation and the question was asked do you have a dry mouth yes do you snore yes so, you know, I really became conscious of having breathing through the mouth. And there were certain things that I will say we did to make sure that my airways were open and I wasn't, um, you know, having the same congestion and, and was able to definitely not feel the obstruction, um, which definitely helped with um, the therapy. 
I have some questions about the remedies, but I'm gonna explain to our audience. When Janet breathes through her mouth, she has to keep her tongue kind of low. And that's why you see on a picture, it was a protective mechanism to, for air to be able to go through the mouth to the lungs. She has to keep her tongue in between her teeth, but air can go through. The tongue should be very low. So it was basically the way for Janet to breathe. And um, as we learn, more she learned how to breathe through the nose, more she was able to breathe through the nose. And uh, uh, when she become confident she can breathe through the nose, she start keeping her lips together. So it changed the whole picture with the changing of those habits. And um, uh, uh, it was actually the same thing when Janet need to swallow, she need to keep her tongue low, still be able to leave the space for the air to go through. So it was all connected. And I would like to ask you what remedies you use, what you learn from our therapy. And I'm going to ask Mariana what remedies she, you know, offer you. But I want to know from your eyes first, what remedies you use to open your nose? Mm -hmm. So the one that was the most um, successful for me was the, well, it's it's the Vicks Vapor Rub Stick, which really puts the, and I'm blanking on the name of the ingredient, um, but it would open my, open my airways and it was quick, right? I think some of the other things that I did, they, they may have had a longer lasting impact, but I'm someone who is often like on the run, doesn't have a lot of time. So that was something I could quickly do before bed. We could quickly do if I was feeling like, oh, I'm I'm having a hard time keeping my mouth closed and breathing through my nose. Um, so that was one of my favorite ones because it was the easiest. That's the kind of patient I am. But <laughs> there were a lot of options. I'll let Mariana talk about those. Uh, now I want to bring Mariana on the spot, and I would like to ask you what options you offer to Janet. You know, as you know, as always, we customize our treatment for specific patients. You know, we learn what works, we learn what doesn't work. And, you know, with Janet, we learn certain things. Additional to the chopsticks that Janet mentioned, like Vicks, we call that boom boom. Mm -hmm. And we, I propose to Janet uh, unblocking nose exercise. It's from Boteco breathing uh, technique. And uh, I think it was helpful, but of course, it's going to take some time. And the boom boom was much easier, like Janet mentioned. <laughs> Especially, this is about unblocking the nose. And also, additional to that, after uh, Janet was able to unblock her nose. It was some additional exercises to teach how to breathe correctly. And uh, tell us, Janet, how do you breathe now? Well, I would love to say I'm at 100% always breathing through my nose, but it's still, I would say I'm very much still a work in progress, but I definitely have seen um, a significant difference. And I would say, you know, I'm past the 50% mark where I started at 10% breathing through my nose. Um, and 90% like through my mouth. Um, now I would say we are above like 50% of the time I am, you know, breathing through my nose, um, which is which is a really big improvement. And uh, I would like to ask you about awareness with the lips. What's your story with the lips? Because I remember when we met, you were always smiling for us. So your mouth was always open. Yes. So I will say the awareness of like my lips being open and then seeing kind of what that looked like, um, especially I work from home. So doing a lot of Zoom calls and so now I can see myself on screen and make sure like, you know, my lips are closed. I am breathing through my nose. And that's been, you know, where I would say before, you know, maybe my mouth was kind of open breathing through, you know, again, most of the time. I think, you know, now it's definitely closed most of the time. No, I, I, I'm so proud of you. And I can say two things. Number one, you know, with that therapy, which is eight months, you know, with Janet, you know, we meet every two weeks, sort of. Uh, we're trying to reverse 30, 30 years old habit of breathing through the mouth. So it's a process and it's constantly going to be the process through the lifetime. Um, but second thing, I think to find, you know, thank you 
and I can say thank you, COVID. <laughs> uh, thank you for the Zoom. Thank you for the Zoom, what we can see ourselves a lot when we talk and we can bring that awareness, what we're trying to push on our patients. Uh, they can see themselves on the screen and remember, okay, lips together. I think it make a big difference in Janet's life. Mm -hmm. So my um, next question, tell me, how was your treatment? What exactly happened? And... Um, you know, what did you do at home? We, I want for our audience to know exactly what it was. Yes. So we did um, Zoom calls probably every two weeks, sometimes every three weeks, which was great. They were flexible, you know, even if we had to go a month without seeing each other. Um, but they started with a check-in on, um, you know, how often are you breathing through your nose? How often is your tongue on the spot? And so we always had a calibration of the progression we were making which was, uh, I found to be really motivating. And then, you know, the second half of the session, after we kind of did the, the sense check on the progress we were making, was um, uh, sharing an exercise for me to work on for the next couple of weeks. And so, you know, that could be a tongue position, that could be a way of breathing, um, something to strengthen my lips, something to strengthen, you know, my tongue. Um, something to help me keep my tongue on the spot. But we would practice two to three exercises in the meeting. And then that became my assignment in between our calls. I would spend um, two minutes every morning and two minutes every afternoon. And I did my best to always do that. You know, sometimes I would miss, but I knew when I had a call coming up that that was my time to really show my performance and show that I had learned um, and I had progressed because some of them were really hard. And in the beginning, I couldn't always do the exercise. So I had to simplify it or start small. So um, there was definitely a lot of motivation um, to make sure that like I showed that progression for the next call. I would like to ask you, and then I would ask Mariana the same question. What did you find the most challenging thing for you in that therapy? Um, at, at, at first, I would say it would be the, the drinking, like changing the way that I, I, I was drinking. Um, but I feel like as soon as it, it clicked, I was able to do it all the time. But I think that that was a really big challenge at first is when we started introducing, you know, um, drinks and food. Um, Maria, what did you yes. find, like yes. how I you designed the therapy and what you find most challenging? I can definitely say that Janet is right because the swallowing pattern was totally uh, incorrect and we tried to <laughs> try to fix it. And it was a lot of challenging, uh, even with the soft food, we tried to put the soft food on the tongue and uh, but I think we fix it and, Je and Janet is aware about it and she are able to do that. And I'm so proud of her. Like it's, uh, I think it's an excellent result. And also additional I can say to the breathing pattern and habits that I think it's changed. It changed, it is the most important for that. Uh, I want to add my part for me. Me, I've been doing quarter again from 2002. So I saw a lot of um, changing of a teeth position after I complete the treatment or orthodontist complete the treatment. And it's always coincide with the muscle habits. So if patient need to help with the tongue and the lips, oh. no, actually with the lips and the cheeks to swallow, then the teeth usually going to get crowded. If patient need to keep the tongue very low and push it through the teeth during, you know, swallowing or whatever, then it's going to be the open bite. I constantly see that. And what I decide for myself, and it was different from orthodontists who come and help us with the patient. My insurance was two retainers. I usually put six retainer on the teeth and then on top of it, I put removable. And every patient asked me the same question. Tell me, how long should I keep it on the teeth? And I said, forever. But nothing is forever. I've seen my work with a strong wire and a removable retainer on a very good patients who were responsible for wearing prescribed treatment every night everything still get crowded and still open. So it was a relapse, even with double insurances, because nothing is stronger than the force of the tongue 
700 times a day for the swallowing and the force of the lips and cheek. It doesn't matter how strong your retainer is going to be. So if you plan to repeat orthodontic treatment three, four times in a lifetime, my functional therapy might not be necessary. But if you want to do one orthodontic treatment and kind of keep it the same way with the retainer at night, you know, we, nothing is 100%. So with retainer at night, then you need to correct my functional habits. I know it's kind of unusual treatment and it maybe sound foreign to some people and they don't want to work twice a day, just like Janet did. You know, that, that's the choice. So let me ask you. I next. just would like to. I just would like to add something, doctor. And especially for the kids, it's so important to check if uh, with the doctor, the doctor can check the breathing, swallowing pattern, and uh, lip seal, tongue on the spot. And it's much better and easier to um, prevent orthodontic treatment on future if child has a good pattern, correct swallowing nose breathing i definitely believe that uh, it's possible to avoid on future orthodontic treatment or even sleep apnea problems which might happen like this is a future one by one is going in future thank you very much it's such a wonderful words what you add thank you marianne and i would like to ask you in general i'm not talking about specific Think, what was the major change, Janet, for your life with the treatment we offer? Um, yeah, I, I do think um, knowledge is power. So knowing that I was doing things incorrectly really motivated me to make a change. Um, I do think the way I present myself, you know, with versus like having my mouth open all the time to having it closed is definitely um, a, a huge difference. And the sleeping at night, um, you know, I've snored my entire life. Um, and I'm not saying I don't snore at all anymore, but definitely my partner will tell you that it is, it is um, much, uh, it's, it's, it's much more infrequent these days than before it was, you know, every single night. And, and, and now it is, you know, once in a while, depending on how I'm sleeping or feeling. So um, those are two huge ways. I think the way that I present myself in the world and then the sounds that I make at night are probably the biggest, um, you know, differences that I see. No, I, I love, thank you very much for your words. What uh, you find, like it, it's for you and for Mariana, that aha moment with therapy, like when you realize, yes, I'm on the right path. Um, well, a big aha moment was every time something was presented to me that I couldn't do. And it's like, something must be wrong. If, if these things, you know, do this with your lips, do this with your tongue. And it's like, I can't, that I didn't have the strength. But then when I started seeing the, the ability through the repetition and practice of the exercises, being able to, oh, I can do this. I just have to put the time into it. So it's so, it's so wonderful what you say that it's make me so proud of you. And I want to say that my functional therapy brought the confidence mm -hmm. it and did. it's wonderful. Yeah. I, I notice it all the time when I ask patients, Oh, can you do this with your tongue? And they have troubles finding the tongue. We mm -hmm. never think about that organ. We know where the hand, we know where the leg, but we don't know where the tongue and with asking to do certain movements and they cannot do them. It, it was amazing. It was a how moment for me, not specifically with Janet, but when I start practicing that therapy. So, Mariash, tell me what was your aha moment with Janet when you helped her with through support her through the therapy. I was so proud finally then I saw that Janet was able to put the tongue on the spot and she changed the swallowing pattern. Did she ever about it? The tongue is not pushing his anymore and she snoring less which is great uh that definitely was a hard moment for me <laughs> to see my result, result of my work <laughs> i think it's what make us go through the day what we can see the difference what we bring to the patient's life it's like a big difference the ability to breathe through the nose keep the lips together and swallow correctly which is not easy for most of the people so Tell me, Janet. And again, we appreciate our audience. If you have a questions, please put them in the chat box. We would be very happy to um, find the answers. Um, 
I would like to ask you, what was situation with the sleep? I want, I know you mentioned about the snoring and in general, not only about snoring, maybe about the dry mouth, you know, about some other things with the sleep, what you notice are different now. Um, so the snoring is, is a big one. I will also say, you know, waking up with a very dry mouth and definitely, you know, it's a little embarrassing, but you know, when you sleep with your mouth open, not only do you snore, but you, you drool on yourself and it's just something that, you know, it, it happens. And, and so now that that's something, um, you know, we've been able to, well, not going to, it's almost reverse. We're getting there. So, but those are really big impacts from the sleep. Oh, that's wonderful. Now I have uh, a question um, uh, for Mariana and maybe for Janet. My question, Marianne, we're working a lot with uh, um, sleep apnea patients and uh, a fact what Janet had orthodontic treatment, uh, how you have to modify the therapy knowing what she has the retainers in the mouth. And it's also a question for Janet, you know, what uh, Invisalign aligners did for her. So how did you have to modify the treatment for Janet what she has uh, Invisalign retainers? I cannot say that I would modify a lot of treatment because Janet has uh, aligners. Uh, it's uh, mostly modified treatment depends on the patient's habits, what uh, problems patient has, if it's more than breathing or if it's more the swallowing pattern. I modify treatment about the habits mostly. But additional to that, it was a great uh, option for Janet that she has uh, aligners, clear aligners. The same time, aligners was expand Janet arches, and she get uh, more space for her tongue. And at the same time, when Janet was wear aligners, uh, she feeling the borders from the aligners on the palate. And it was exactly spot where Janet needs to put her tongue on the palate. Like tongue on the spot is what the borders for Janet to put it. Uh, tell me, Janet, with aligners, did you notice how aligners help you or guide you? Yeah, I think it was a couple week period when we started um, the therapy, and I did not have yet have the aligners, and the aligners really just gave me confidence that I was holding my tongue in the right spot because there is a space on the top of my mouth where, you know, my tongue isn't, you know, supposed to kind of be up against the ridge of the aligner. So it just gave me confidence when you're learning that tongue spot at the beginning. Um, and you're thinking about it, you know, as much as you can, because most of the time your tongue is not there. Um, so the, 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 the liners really gave me confidence in that reminder of where's your tongue, where's your tongue and, you know, continuing to put it back on the spot. Uh, but another thing I want to ask you, uh, did you find more space for your tongue? But you had orthodontic treatment at the same time. Oh, yeah, definitely. So that just got easier over time, the more that, you know, the Invisalign to really change the, the position of my teeth. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I would like that would be uh, more question to Mariana and... I would like to add, what do you think, Marianne, with myofunctional therapy, what we work and, you know, you support the Janet on her journey, uh, what would be afterwards? You know, a lot of people ask me, they say, okay, you know, you suggest I proceed with my, my functional therapy with you, but that's it? This is it? Okay. When I finish with that, how you know what your view on the design of follow-up specifically for janet or for other patients we usually would like to schedule people uh, patients for follow-up visits like in from three to six months to check uh, habits of the swallowing of the, the breathing pattern and it's really good to find out if it's the same or not like a similar to a um, patient if person going to gym to hold muscles on tone and the same right here it, it cannot say that it's done like final session and that's it and no more uh, treatment no more awareness about it definitely not person already knows her body and knows like uh, how habits it changes how the word tongue supposed to be breathing pattern 
I just always remind that it's supposed to be just repeatedly, maybe not so uh, strong and not so often, like it was during the my functional session, but definitely supposed to be awareness and maybe a couple times a week, just double check. Or I'm able to check the tank on the suction position. If my tank is uh, on the roof of my mouth, if how I am breathing, if I'm breathing during through my nose or just my mouth, or maybe I'm going back to my previous habits, it's always good to check. And they will be asked patient to come for the follow-up visit to double check and maybe correct some position and uh, maybe change some way. Depends, of course, on the case. Thank you very much, Jonathan and Mariana. I think we, you know, we were able to totally make this treatment, you know, not so puzzled anymore. So the myofunctional therapy helped with the four things for Janet to support her orthodontic treatment, what we did with the clear aligners and helped her to breathe through the nose easier, keep the lips together. She has a strength in the lips. And with her tongue, now she knows where her tongue is on the roof of the mouth, or it should be. And she swallowed just with the help of her tongue without um, moving her lips and cheek. So for our audience, if you have any questions about this treatment and how we do that, please put your questions in the chat box. We would be very happy to answer. And uh, we're looking forward to help you and make your smile That's beautiful. And one more I just would like to add for especially sleep apnea people that additional to four, head, four goals that we have in my functional therapy for orth orthodontic patients, additional to that for sleep apnea patients, we just add additional exercises to make the throat muscles much stronger and to keep it on the tone and just repeatedly just give it additional exercises for sleep apnea people, which is also so important. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you all and um, looking forward to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.